Hi everybody, I'd love to introduce you to my newest little family member here, an eight week old border collie puppy. A lovely couple was rehoming him and uh, it was a surprise puppy. I didn't, I wasn't planning on getting a border collie puppy, but I'm, I mean, I just saw him and, and it was destiny. I mean, he's just so amazing and so confident and just so wonderful. Uh, sorry to boast, but of course, you know, all puppies can be overwhelming. So um, he's just perfect in every way. But of course, um, he's my first puppy that's quite mouthy. So uh, he's biting at my hands a lot, you know, going to try and bite my hands a lot and my feet. So I've always felt a little uncomfortable making no biting videos because I always never get a very mouthy puppy. So I'm like, yay, <laughs> I finally got a mouthy puppy. <laughs> What I like to tell a lot of people that have mouthy puppies is that that usually means they've been pretty social in their puppyhood because they've been playing games with litter mates. Um, when a puppy doesn't mouth at all, that is more worrisome to me than uh, if they're really mouthy. Now, of course, there's abnormal mouthing where they're uh, viciously biting you and drawing blood and it's inappropriate and really worrisome. And then you might want to get a veterinary behaviorist involved in your training. But just a little bit of mouthing is great. It's normal. Hey, pup-ups. So along with training him not to bite my hands and my clothes and my feet when they're walking or go and bite my little dogs when they run past or bite the tails of my border collies, I'm also working on him, teaching him to, to know what is appropriate to play with with his mouth. So from day one, the moment he got here, we started interacting with all the toys that I wanted him to be um, interested in and go to look for when he wants to play and use his mouth. The mouth of a little puppy is similar to the hand of a toddler, so they need uh, to put things into their mouth and investigate uh, to grow normally. So, you know, if we just say, oh, let's not have him bite on anything, that's not going to create a, a healthy puppy. They need to do all this investigating with their mouth. So we just need to show them the appropriate things to do it with. Um, so you might want to get a couple of different textures of toys. These are all soft toys, but um, there's some rubber toys back there. And if your puppy's just not interested in your toys and keeps going for other things, just try getting different toys to see what your puppy's interested in. And then also don't have too many out because if you have a ton of toys out, um, what can happen is the puppy could possibly uh, start to believe that anything on the floor is free. So if you had some shoes and then there's some toys, it's hard to make the association. So just having a couple toys that they, you've really created a reinforcement history with playing with you um, and really enjoying uh, investigating and playing with those toys. So I've had him a day and we've really built this and like all my other puppies he's not chewing on anything and he can be loose in the house because I take him out frequently to go to the bathroom. So I really like to teach puppies right from the start uh, by reinforcing the appropriate choices to be loose in the house. And that way they can choose what they wanna do. So when he's loose, I'm supervising him 100% of the time. And I'm really making that effort in the first few days, which is very exhausting to make sure that he can be loose because that's the end goal. So I have the doors to other rooms closed and if he goes around the corner, I'll you know get him back or follow him. And I'm just making sure that he's making appropriate choices while out loose. And at the same time, I'm uh, making sure he doesn't pee. So I, if I see him going to sniff, then I'll say pop ups and we'll rush out the door or if an activity is ended. So if he's drank water, if he's done uh, eating treats or his breakfast, if he's done playing, if he's done napping, then I'll take him out to make sure that he's gone to the bathroom. So when I do need to get work done, I'll have him in an environment where he can't make any mistakes. So usually I work in my office and I have him in a pen or loose in my office because there's nothing on the floor for a little pup to get into. And then that way I can monitor him all the time when he's loose in the house and set him up for success. I already have a tutorial starring one of my other Border Collies as a puppy on how to teach your dog to not mouth you or your hands or feet when you're moving around. 
And uh, in that video, you'll see that the puppy is actually mouthing on something uh, because people are always like, oh, you're using on an already trained dog. Um, but the thing with positive reinforcement is you set the dog up for success. So before I'm even starting the training, I'm making sure that the puppy is enjoying the reinforcement. So um, I've also not used the, the extremely high level of reinforcement. Um, there's some dried chicken that he gets way too excited about. So that might make him uh, stressed during this training. So I have like a medium value treat and then I'm just moving, marking and reinforcing him for not going after my feet when they go by. The other thing with border collies is they can tend to want to herd you as well. So as you see, he's just kind of looking up calmly, expecting food rather than seeing me as some exciting herding object. Good boy. Good job. Awesome. Well done. Well done. Good boy. Hi, puppy. Hi. Good job. Hi. Hi. Hey, puppy. Good. Whoop. Puppy. I almost did it too much there. I could see his little brain thinking about biting it. So if you do something that is extremely hard for your puppy, you can go back and make it easier again so that you're not just starting to make the puppy aroused. Good job. Another reason that my puppy is so calm right now is that when I pet and touch and interact with him, I don't do it in a very frantic, excitable way, uh, which most people do when they see puppies. And this actually might make him mouthy, but a lot of people will do this kind of stuff when they see puppies and go, oh, puppy, puppy, puppy. Oh, you're so cute. And then that makes the puppy very aroused. And they also want to do something exciting back to you and they use their mouth. So that's just normal. So we can teach puppies to be calm around handling by being calm ourselves. So when you interact with your puppy, do it in a respectful way where you're just petting them calmly and they're, it's really going to help them feel calm and relaxed around you. Hey, Popsy. Good job. So if your puppy's really mouthy with just the slightest touch um, or they want to go for your sleeve if it's like dangling right near their face as you're, as you're petting them, you can feed them and pet them at the same time to begin with like that. Good job. And I have a whole video on how to go over this and teach your puppy not to bite your hands. But the more conditioning of calmness around being handled, the better. Because the wonderful thing about starting this early is that you can then use handling to calm your puppy down. So if they're getting excited, you can calmly pet them. But if you've only made petting an exciting thing that makes them excited, then you can't use handling to help calm them down. Instead, it can make them more excited, especially if you're restraining them. I also have a video on teaching a puppy to be restrained because oftentimes that will get skipped in the training. And so um, if you have a little puppy and they grow up into an adult and someone has to restrain them at the vet, that can be very frightening for an adult dog and it can possibly mean that the dog might bite. So you wanna practice restraints as well with a puppy and I have a video on that too and I'll link those in the description below. Look at you being perfect. No one would believe that you were very excitable and biting my hands just a few minutes earlier. A lot of trainers suggest having a leash on a puppy inside the house. My own way that I train is I don't like to have a leash on because what can happen is that the puppy hits the end of the leash and gets used to pulling into that pressure. So when I train leash walking, uh, I like to train right from the start that the puppy never pulls on leash. And that's really hard if you have a leash on a, a lot of the time and your puppy's really bored about being with you and, and wants to do other stuff. So I prefer this way of teaching the puppy how to behave when loose 
and build their motivation to want to be around me rather than it being that they can't leave my side. So that's, that's how I like to train. And usually once I've reinforced them, as you'll see, if I just ignore him, he's gonna hang around me because this has been the most reinforcing place to be. And then it's really easy to watch him when he's loose. Sometimes if you uh, have a leash, and they're used to the concept of, oh, when I'm off leash, I get to do stuff. They're not gonna wanna be near you as much when you've hooked the leash off, because now they get to do these things they don't often get to do. Um, so it can really uh, backfire sometimes where the leash makes the dog disinterested in you because they're attached to you all the time. So when they're off leash, it's suddenly this wonderful opportunity to finally have choices and, and make decisions in the environment. And that's really reinforcing for animals. So by just teaching them to make the choices that you like, then everybody's happy. And you have a very contented puppy whose little brain is growing because they're busy doing stuff and having thoughts and getting to do what they want and deciding they don't want that toy, they want the other toy, or maybe they want to put one toy on top of the other or run across the kitchen and then play with it on the mat and come back and lay in their dog bed. So all those little choices that they're making are helping them grow. And also um, when the puppy's loose, their body is gonna be growing more normally because um, they're moving around more. If a dog's on a leash, uh, their movement is restricted. The same with a, a crate. So I suggest when leaving a puppy that you leave the puppy in a pen rather than a crate because then they can make more natural movement when they're uh, confined and they can make choices of whether to sleep or whether to move around and play with their toys. Hey, pup pups. This is a lobster kitty. Oh yeah. Oh, where'd it go? Where'd it go? Where did it go? Oh, she got my he got my shirt. So I can say pup pups and then show him the toy that I want him to get. Yeah, that's right. Here I happen to get a shot of him mouthing my hand. The game plan is setting the environment up for success so the puppy makes the correct choices mm -hmm. and then when the puppy does mouth, then interrupt and redirect to something appropriate and the real important part is teaching the puppy what to do around moving hands and clothes. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to support my work, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to my channel. You can also become a supporting member of channel Kiko Pup by clicking the join button. See you later.